You ever wonder what it's like to play in the NHL? You're about to find out. Here we go, boys. Here we go. Battle, battle. That's it, boys. Let's go. 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 let us go 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 the Minnesota Wild is just a, you know, bunch of hungry players that work hard. Everybody, like, uh, we got through with a uh, bunch of guys here and, like, uh, lots of leaders, like uh, Brad Brown. <laughs> Brad Brown, you know, he's a good guy, you know. Um, <laughs> just asking, he looks good with his new haircut, so. We told him to grow the apple out, but he didn't want to. Today's game day. Our goalie, Fernandez, don't talk to him. He wants his quiet, his peace and quiet, so that's a hint for you guys to stay away. Who's the jokester on this team? Wait for Darby. Did Darby get here yet? You gotta wait for Darby to come down. Where should I start? <laughs> that guy has so money right there. Aaron Davey over here. Our biggest outdoorsman on the team. Nick Schultz, who just took off. Young rookie, 19 years old. Doing a great job. Watch this guy right here. He eats the most of any guy in the league. That's his first plate. Four or five of those, I think, maybe. When he's done. <laughs> as long as you eat good food, you can eat a lot. That's all there is to it. Jimmy eats a lot. You don't want me to tell you what I think of Marion? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you really eat like chicken and rice and, and uh, uh, some broccoli and salad and after. I'm gonna have some ice cream and that's about it. Or sometimes a soup, so it's uh, usually all the same. He's a good kid. He's uh, 20, 19, 20 years old. Works hard, unbelievable skills. And Willie Mitchell, go, don't forget Willie Mitchell. <laughs> what you see is what you get, I guess. I don't know, there's not much to it. He really likes the camera. He wants to look good. He's single. He wants to look good for the girls. Another day, great lunch, <laughs> another game. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got to say. Mike Madano skating at the Met Center is an ever-fading memory. And the days at Reunion Arena are also from a time gone by for this franchise. The stars now call this $420 million American Airlines Center home. And tonight, the Wild make their first visit to the new digs in Dallas. Welcome everybody to Dallas, and if you want to tell me there is not a rivalry between these two teams, I will say you're an absolute liar, because once you've had your heart broken, it never truly heals all the way. Sandy's kept me consistently at 70 my first two years here. First ship running you guys over. Okay, People think you just show up and play a hockey game. You gotta have your soccer game first. <laughs> Good game, boys. 
Come on out. 30 seconds here, boys. 25. Let me see. Hey, Manny, come on, Manny. Here we go, boys. Come on, Green. Whenever you're ready here, Manny. Let's go, boys. Come on. Go. Did, he, did, he, did he go? Did he go? Where's Manny? Uh -oh. Manny, go. Come on, Gavin. Same way. Come on, right. boys. Come on. Come on. Luena's on the ice. Matt Johnson out of the lineup again tonight. West Walls back in the Twin Cities. Nursing the chest injury and not a single whistle. Two minutes plus into this game. Jason Marshall steps into the zone. Marshall starts on a wing here. And it is kicked into the zone. So Matt Luen coloring on the four check. That's way to skate. Good start, good start. Uh, hey, Sebi, what's up? All right? Yep. Off the lines in the way, 98. All right, Jimmy. All right, Sibby. Hey, keep your feet moving, Marcy. Let's go, Vince. Yeah, you know it takes forever. You can't talk because you can't All right. Thanks, Vince. Yeah, look, look. Face off went by Cook Muller. Muller on a forward line with John McClain and former Minnesota Wild Captain Scott Pellery. Remember Pellerin made Marcy. his Dallas star debut hey, Marcy, in the Marcy. Ball. Hey, in the offensive zone, let's puck sales, get two guys over on the puck and the third guy overload that side. Protect it down there. Go, Lubo! Skate! Lubo! Here, if, they, if they're set up behind the net, yeah. whoever's there first, go first. The other two guys just set up. Yeah. All right. Keep going, Dave. Keep going, Dave. And then force them to come up one side. They fake a lot of Four shots. Four straight boys. wins. Turkel was in relief for the first and has started the other three. He's starting his fourth consecutive game tonight. Fernandez, the former backup scorer. We'll get that back here. Final five seconds of the period. Stars are going to go into the locker room with a 1-0 lead. Limiting the Minnesota Wild top to just three shots on goal. Hey, 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 hey. If we can jump, just... Go. Only when they're totally set up. Like, you just, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Don't hesitate. That's all right. I got speed to get back, Marshy. Yep. Muller got to the loose puck first, fired in front of Manny Fernandez. And kept in at the blue line by Brad Lukowicz. Dow trying to use his speed down the wing. Dow, wheel to the forehand now, leaves it on the backhand, and it's broken up in front. God, I should have just took it to the net there and crashed it, but the f***ing forward. And I thought, one of you guys went to the net, and they had three of their guys right in front. You took three guys with you. Yeah, you know what? You want me to touch you? No. You don't want me to touch behind you there? Well, I, he was a forward. That's why I took off, you know what I mean? Hey. Uh, all right, Jimmy, here we go. Off the line, in the white, on the right. Put it in! Go! Ryan get a good scoring opportunity here, their first one in the second period. Why is everybody grabbing you? Rivalries 
against the Stars as he was in Edmonton for some of those intense playoff series. The late penalty going to be called. And the Wild are going to have a five on three. Yuri Lettinen tackles Jim Dowd. And a great chance to tie this game. They got a hold. Lettinen. Next one's in, Marty. Switch! Dowd. Sergei Zolkov skating to the middle. Let's it fly. Good save, Tucker. When Brick, New Jersey's Jim Dowd made his NHL debut for his hometown team on March 26, 1992, it was a dream come true. Ten years later, he finds himself to be a respected leader of the young expansion Minnesota Wild. For the years in between, he had his share of ups and downs. Oh, it's been unbelievable. I mean, actually been a little bit of a roller coaster. Championship to New Jersey! The Devils win the Stanley Cup! Winning the Stanley Cup was like a dream come true, obviously. And winning it in your home state of New Jersey, the first Stanley Cup ever there, it was, it was a big thrill in front of your family and friends. And uh, the next year I was traded to Vancouver. It's one of those things, it was a little bit of a roller coaster after that, but got back on track in Calgary and Edmonton. And then coming here to the Wild was probably one of the best things for me. You just come in, you just want to show, you know, your leadership on the ice and off the ice and, you know, teach guys, hopefully teach guys, you know, the right way to do things and hopefully they'll learn from your mistakes and your past experiences. That's the best thing you can do. You know, I had guys like, you know, John McLean and Bruce Driver and Kenny Danico in New Jersey who were great team players and they were great guys on and off the ice. And they didn't care whether you were a rookie, you know, a second year guy, ten year guy, they were, they treated everybody the same and that's what, you know, I try to do here with the younger guys and with everybody. Dowd's leadership skills earned him the honor of being named captain for a month, a unique system his team has for one of hockey's biggest honors. Doug Reisbro, the GM, and the coaching staff came, you know, came up with that idea. I think just to get some, a little more team bonding last year, it started out and it worked out well. At the, the end of each month, the next practice, whatever it is, morning skate or practice, they come out and they do this little speech on how the last captain did, and then uh, whoever they named captain for that month, they got the jersey there and you got to do a little... Uh, a little lap around, uh, around the rink with it, so it's, it's pretty funny. We have a lot of fun with it. He's wearing the Captain C for the month of February. The Wild have had a rotating Captain C. You get named Captain in the NHL, NHL, even though it's for a month, you know, guys are proud of it, and, you know, there's a lot of guys that are, level of play picks up when that happens. And it's just giving guys a little extra leadership role there, and they could take it, do what they want with it, and, like, I had it for one month, and it was, you know, a lot of fun. I mean, it's a good feeling when, you know, the coaching staff, you know, puts that trust in you and you want to go out and, you know, do even better. And it's been head coach Jacques Lemaire who always seems to get the best out of Jim Dowd. When I first got up to the NHL on a regular basis was with him when he was in New Jersey. It was great. I mean, I played for him there and, you know, it definitely helped me out coming back here to Minnesota. He showed a lot of trust in me in all different situations and I can't say enough about how much it's helped me. So I just want to, you know, hopefully stay with it and be here when this team goes in the playoffs with them and takes a run at the Stanley Cup. For the Wild to reach that goal, they'll need their young players to become the superstars they're capable of being. Stars! Marion Gabarik, the spectacular sophomore! Everybody knows he's got all the tools. He's just turned 20 years old and um, he's got everything. I mean, as long as he keeps his head on straight, he could be one of the best players in the league by far. When I'm out there with him, I'm just trying to give him the puck as much as possible and go to the net because it's either going in or I'll get the rebound. Brunette, he scores! Andrew Brunette. You know, Andrew Brunette and Sergei Zoltok, they've helped out quite a bit this year, especially with the power play. And then I think big keys now and for the future, guys like Nick Schultz and Pascal Dupuy and Willie Mitchell. I mean, you know, those are three young guys who go with, you know, Marion Gabrick. I mean, great nucleus of young players. You know, and then you also have guys like Darby Hendrickson, you know, Aaron Gavey, Wes Walls, I mean, Stacey Rose, you know, guys that have been around for a little bit but still have a lot to prove in this league. And, we just have, you know, a great group of characters in here. Jersey Jimmy over here, straight out of Brick, New Jersey. He's a legend from that area. But he's claiming he's a Minnesotan, no. Isn't that right, Jimmy? Yep. I think in all team sports, that's the biggest key is 
the chemistry on the team. I mean, most teams, all the teams that win have good chemistry and guys that you have to like one another. Not every single person, but the majority. Like I say, that just builds, you know, winning and, you know, good atmosphere and, a, you know, good strong organization a lot quicker. No matter how long it takes Minnesota to play for this Stanley Cup, one thing's for certain. Fan support will always be wild. Fans, from day one, they've been great. I mean, we've sold out every game, including uh, every exhibition game. I remember the first exhibition game at home here was against Anaheim. We came out to a standing ovation during warm-ups, not even before the game started. So it's pretty special, and every game here has been like a playoff-type atmosphere. I mean, and a raucous crowd here in the XL Energy Center. They love their hockey here, and it's, it's definitely gives a little bit of an edge to the players. Talk about a momentum shift. It has just moved back in favor of the home team. You heard the fans chanting to get the wild going. This building is one of the loudest in the National Hockey League. All the guys in the league say this is one of the best arenas to come to. Every game is, is it's great. I mean, it's loud, it's exciting, and it's a great building. It seems that Jim Dowd has indeed found a home with the wild. It's up, man. Bomber, come on, Bomber! Bomber! Stands down up at the blue line, gave him a little extra shove in the process. Now it's Yuri Lettman on the right wing. Lettman comes across the line for Dallas. Fires it in. Blood by Fernandez, mishandled, but cleared behind the net. I don't think the shot came as fast as he thought it was going to come, and as a result of that, he was a little bit too quick for the puck and could not handle it. Phil hey. Nicro Knuckler, maybe. Go, center! Yeah. Dallas Stars have posted over 100 points in each of their past five seasons. 106 last year, shot score. Brendan Morrow gets a big goal with 58.5 on the clock. Just get it right away, chip it off the boards. I'm just going to skate hard to your chip. And then you just skate right to the net. And I'll either put it on net, I'll put it on net or behind the net to you. Go, Alexo! Madonna won that draw clean. Locks it in on the backhand. Turco kicks it. Yes! Yeah! Two periods, we are tied at two. Come on up, come on up, come on up. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Oh, boy, pal. Two to our score. Come on, boys. They're slow down there, huh? Let's get on it. Goal coming at 1955 of the second period. Hey, big shift here, Blue. Come on. And he has given Here, boys. Here we go. Come on, Bruno. That's it, bro. Gabby. McLean and Scott Pellerin on this forward line. Sidor behind the net. Looks to push it in front. Bombardier. And now it's Muller. Muller tries to work it in front. Leaves it behind for Pellerin. Keller in that familiar number 33, started the year in Boston, signing a contract there after finishing last year in Carolina. And then waved by Boston and picked up here. In Dallas, kicked aside by Manny Fernandez. Behind the net, Kirk Muller. Gates gets deep and tries to cycle it out, can't do so. Zoom on the drive and it is gloved by Manny Fernandez. And they're going to keep coming, boys. Let's get ready. Wild trying to shut things down here. They have really limited the star shots on goal time since that first period. Here's a shot going. Good set for the end. It's Get a 
strong performance from Manny Fernandez. The coaches have got to be very ecstatic by what they have seen here. It's for at least 48 hours before they have to go against the Columbus Blue Jackets. That's a good road game. That's a good third period. Freaking pesky wild. It's a good third period, boys. That'll win you a lot of hockey games, that one. It's obviously huge. Uh, that was the last little stretch on the road. Uh, we were coming back two weeks now at home, so it was good to finish on a good note. And then obviously, it's a good momentum for us to come back home and, and, and play other teams. We're going to be playing Columbus twice, so obviously, that's a, it's a good big boost. And uh, just from there, we can uh, just uh, relax and play now. This is NHL All Access, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Yay! For the pesky wild, a flight home was next. This is where team chemistry reached new heights. Take a ride. Take a ride. Minnesota's nickname is State of Hockey. 
because they always like to talk about the state of hockey. Brad Bombardier is the ringleader of that whole thing. Governor, state of hockey, all that stuff. But that's what makes it fun. That's what keeps us, keeps everything light. You know, he's a homegrown boy. He's a, he's a nice young man. He's a great leader. He loves the game of hockey. And people in turn love him in Minnesota. And we love him, too. He's a fantastic guy. I mean, fantastic. <laughs> you just saw how well Brad Bombardier speaks. I think he's trying to create things through me to, to really talk about himself as a future governor. He is the governor. You see how he talks and how he interacts with people? He's trying to put it all on me, but really he's talking about himself. It's the truth. This is getting on tape, right? I think I struggle with some parts and aspects of my life. But come to Minnesota, I get to play with a guy like him. And, you know, he's everything I wanted to be growing up. And uh, does anyone have a tissue? Does anyone? And so it's nice to see someone get the credit that uh, is richly deserving of it. You know, I just wish it was me once in a while. I really do. This guy here, What's you know that? what? It's unbelievable because he's what? 20, Are you going to get on it now? He's 23. 24. And it's unbelievable because he's had like 24. Oh, hey, they already iced me down. 1,100 uh, games in the league. It's unbelievable. I don't know how, where he got all these games and experience from. Oh, he knows a lot, this man. This man he's a very witty oh, guy. Oh, listen to it. Yeah. I know he took a lot of abuse back there, but... It's all right. We were up here reminiscing about Steve Eisman's stories with Stacy. <laughs> Stacy. Stacy's you know, idol, Steve Eisman. Back when he used Stacey to play... Stacy played in Detroit for a little while. And we heard a lot of stories. A lot of Steve Eisman's stories. So Steve Eisman's... I don't bring him up. We know they, a lot about bring him up. I, I just do my job. <laughs> okay, cut. Welcome back to NHL All Access. It was a mere seven hours after their plane landed, but it was time to get back to business. Here we go again. Did we just, just, did we just get off the plane? It was an open practice for fans of all ages who weren't shy about who their favorite players were. My favorite players are Hendrickson and Gavin because they skate fast and Hendrickson's from Minnesota. But just seeing the wild practice wasn't the only attraction. Afterwards, the players stuck around for a few autographs. I have Manny Fernandez, Stacey Roos, and Bombardier and some other players too. And while entertaining the masses was fun, beating his former team the night before was even better for Manny Fernandez. Obviously, I know when I go there, there I'm being watched, and uh, you know they're looking uh, to see if they made the right thing or uh, or they uh, they messed up. But obviously, it's always great to win against your old team and prove that uh, you're grown. The Wild fans can't seem to get enough of their hockey players, and the players can't seem to get enough of hockey as Willie Mitchell attends the Minnesota High School Hockey Championships. I got traded here from New Jersey, and. Uh, a buddy of mine's like, oh, you're going to love it there. You know, hockey, it's unbelievable. It's just like Canada, and that's the truth. Chance for Mitchell, he scores! With the way the team's going, with our kind of young attitude right now, that uh, we're definitely going to be a team that's kind of high-energy team, I feel. Uh, you know, like see ourselves already in the type of mold of, uh, you know, the Edmonton Oilers. They have a somewhat young team, a high-energy team, and I think uh, you know, our team's kind of shaping up that way. But... Uh, Five years, uh, you know, if we keep progressing uh, as we are, you know, definitely going to be a playoff team, that is for sure. But uh, I think every one of us on our team feel that, you know, we're going to be a team that will be able to compete in five years and compete with the Stanley Cup, not just uh, compete against the top teams in the league. And uh, I guess if we don't have players uh, who have that attitude on the team, then it's probably, uh, probably not the right attitude. And uh, I think most of the guys in the dressing room have that attitude as well. It's amazing, you know. Every every game sold out. It's uh, it's nuts. It's a zoo in here. Every time we score, and uh, it's really really exciting uh, to play in front of a crowd like that. They take great pride in their hockey hockey here, whether it be high school hockey or, or any type of hockey for that matter. And in front of the goal, all alone, they score. The Minnesota Wild win it three to two. Definitely a, a special place to play. That's for sure. 
boy did he get that. I couldn't even hear myself. Rituals vary from team to team and from player to player in the NHL. In Minnesota, you'll find all the guys doing the same thing before the game, getting their sticks ready in their own unique way. Everybody's different. Everybody is individual. I like my stick black, so I paint them black. and. Uh... If I got an old blade that I gotta shave down a little bit because it's cracked or something like that, I'll do that, but try not to spend too much time. You over, you spend too much time, you get, get too mental about it. A lot of carpentry work. That scale might be one of our top carpenters. Okay, I can't get used to those uh, synergy or graphite sticks. I like to do my, my own thing, shaving my stick, shaving, shaving my blade, my shaft, and, and all this stuff, so. Can you kind of feel it? Dab it on the ground a couple of times, so it gets kind of tight. You gotta put some more. Every single game I get to do one stick. I always come like on the bench and look at the, at the rink where, where we're playing, you know? I like the black, the black tape on the white ice. Easier for me, you know? I'm not that good, so I need some help. Columbus, they're a team that's a big rival for us because it's only their second year as well as ours. And I think we beat them and tied them this year, so they're looking for to avenge on, you know, that, that loss. So it's a big game, and after, especially after two big road wins, you don't want to have a letdown coming home. One looks at the other to, to know where they're at, and uh, I think we're, we're trying to grow as, uh, as both like as uh, expansion teams, and we're, we're obviously looking at each other's records to, to know where we stand. Two years ago, this competition began at the NHL Expansion Draft. Well, let's have a good draft. Yeah. Well, guys, let's have some fun, eh? Just let's keep in mind here as we make all these decisions, we got character and we got speed. Let's let's keep that as a bit of a priority here when we're making some tough decisions. Columbus is on the clock for the first pick for goaltenders. Everybody feel good about this pick? Come on, game's on. Now. Yeah, you, you're doing uh, the board. The board. Don't get any uh, cream cheese on it. <laughs> Minnesota has selected with the second selection uh, goaltender Jamie McLennan from the St. Louis Blues. Minnesota is on the clock for the third selection in the goaltender round. All right, we're going to take this guy to get the deal. And then we'll take the jersey guy here. With the third selection in the goaltender round, Minnesota selected goaltender Mike Vernon from Florida. Columbus is now on the clock with the fourth selection in the goaltender round. We want it, boys. Yeah. We got the next one now. So we're taking Rollison from Buffalo. He's a he's a free agent. So we come out of our goaltending net. How much money have we spent? Twenty-five. Two hundred twenty-five thousand. We got twelve more million to spend. <laughs> so we're gonna take. Chuck, we're taking Ferrari, trading him back for Bombardier, right? Should we get Bombardier on the uh, Guys, is this the, what is the order of the defense? Is it like this? With the fourth selection in the defenseman round, Minnesota selects defenseman Curtis LeCision from the Carolina Hurricanes. Columbus is on the clock. Thank Our you. first gift, boys. We want Jamie Pusher here, guys. Yeah. Or Bachanik. Let's go Pusher, Pusher to North Pusher. American. Yeah. We're going with Pusher. Columbus selects defenseman Jamie Pusher from Dallas Stars. 
Yes! If Odeline doesn't go, I think we jump in on Odeline here. Does anybody disagree with that? All right. These three guys here. Well, I want to know the power play. I'm more sure on him over these guys. He can be a power play guy, great skater, rangy, contains well, makes good plays with the puck, great shot. <laughs> what about Bachanic, guys? We're going to lose him here. We've got them both. Oh, we've got them both. That's all right, man. Glad you guys are here. Boys, we got to like the look of that blue line, eh? Love it. I'll tell you what, boys. Our blue line is huge. Oh, I just got the... thinking about forwards. Let's go. The first selection in the forward stage of the draft, Columbus selects from Buffalo, Jeff Sanderson. This is Minnesota is on the clock. This is a big call. These next two are huge for us to whether we get anybody here, boys. Yeah, here we go. We're looking at 2-3. Come on up here. I want to talk about this. Look at 2-3. Take the emotional part. He'll take great. One minute. Emotional part. He takes great. He gets you take Drake. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. You get both. With the second selection of the forward stage of the draft, Minnesota selects from Detroit, Stacy Rose. Now we knew that, boys. Knew that. With the third selection in the forward stage of the draft, Minnesota selects from Detroit, Daryl LaPlante. Oh, wow. Columbus is on the clock. Okay, we go with Turner Stevenson. Columbus picks from Montreal, Turner Stevenson. Minnesota is on the clock. So we'll take uh, Pellerin, right? We, we said all along we want a character and speed. That was our mandate. Okay, so we're going Hines. Hines. Who do we want, Gron or Hines? I've got six seconds. Both. both. With the seventh selection in the forward stage of the draft, Columbus selects from the Boston Bruins, Stephen Hines. Minnesota is on the clock. So now do we want Dowd? Or vault. Right up to be down. You know what? I'll get my team in there. Uh, 1990. It's all the same thing. I guess that they're 30. <laughs> well, you're all the two, John. We're done, guys. We, the only thing we sit on is Deneen as a, as a leader. Hendrickson, he kills penalties more than that. Hendrickson's 20. Hendrickson's 28. He's a Minnesota kid, isn't he? Yes, he, is. he can really speak. Minnesota selects from the Vancouver Canucks, Darby Hendrickson. Great. Good job, guys. Good job, boy. Good. Yeah, good job, Terry. Did you get that work? Good job, boys. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. One of the great things about matchups in the NHL between rivals, you're going to have a lot of hitting. Oh, it's a tough game. We've been playing well, and you know we can't change anything. We have to just keep playing the way we have the last couple games, and uh, hopefully we'll be successful. It's a wonderful thing in hockey, isn't it, when you introduce emotion and a little dislike in a game? So Columbus uh, expansion team like we are, so it's pretty excited. So uh, I'm getting ready for this game. It is loud here, sellout crowd at the XL Energy Center in St. Paul. Come on, coming easy. You're gonna work. One minute, boys. One minute. Up. Yep. Ranking rights on the line as the Jackets meet the Wild. Ten seconds. Come on, Brad. Come on, Brad. Come on, Brad. Come on, Brad. Come on buddy. Woo! They are electrified here at the XL Energy Center. Come on, right. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, neighbor. Let's go, neighbor. Big game, man. You're watching NHL All Access. Oh, it is nice to be home back in the state of hockey. The second longest homestand of the year. This one is five games, and it starts with a matchup between the Blue Jackets and the Wild. Brad Brown has been quietly effective the last few games. Looks like he's getting back towards 100%. I think he is. And the one thing he's trying to do also is stay out of the penalty box. At one time, he felt he had to stand up for everyone. And they really need his presence on the ice, especially with the number of injuries they've had in the defenseman. They don't want him off the ice. They want him on there. And so I think he's kind of curtailed some of that, that roughness without being, being able to draw those penalties has certainly helped his team. Go, 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 go.
Mike. I got a Mike before on Got to be a good boy now. Let's go, Chelsea. Still not a single shot on goal for Columbus here in the first period. And we have played over 15 and a half minutes. Brunette behind the net. Defended oh, by oh, that's it, that's it. seconds of the period. Columbus is about to go the entire first period without an official shot on goal until right in the last minute. One shot on goal for the Columbus Blue Jackets in period number one. That is what has been credited to Columbus. Oh, here, here's what's happening here right now. You watch Columbus, they're trying to get some motion, and they brought up Jody Shelley here onto the ice, and of course, he's their big resident tough guy, so you know exactly why uh, his presence is being put on the ice there right now, trying to get something going here for the Columbus Blue Jackets against Minnesota and see if he gets some emotion with his players on the bench. Go, Yanni! Go! Gabrick and Brunette jump ahead on the play. Here's Gabrick looking for an angle. Fires the shot, Mates meeting here for the sixth time tonight. Dowd picks up the puck. He's pushed down by Grant Marshall, the former star. Played by Nick Schultz. Schultz feeds it to Dowd. Good pass shot. Oh, how good was that? Three nothing Minnesota. Bing bang boom. Wild. Wow. Lead three to nothing. Gabrick has two goals. Dupuy has the other, and Joltak gets it. Joltak in front. Oh, save rebound. Brunette has it shot. Knocked down. Sackers waiting. Sackers got it. Now by the sensational second-year player for these wild, fresh off his second career hat trick, Marion Gabrick. And Marion, as we watch your three goals, what were the keys on these goals? You know, I think uh, we've been uh, moving quite very well, especially Andrew Brunet. You know, uh, he can find a man, and, and uh, uh, he's been great with the puck. You know, second second goal, you know, the same. Bruno passed the puck, and then uh, uh, third goal again. You know, uh, Ruben Scratch passed me the puck. You know, and it was it was great. You know. We've been playing great, great game defensively, and try to try to uh, uh, produce this way. Tonight. Under 11 minutes in regulation time, O'Ben fires the 11th shot of the night for Columbus on Dwayne Rollison. Well, Columbus certainly has certainly picked up the pace in this third period, Mike. They're getting some chances, and Rollison has had to be very strong. Rollison's had to make some tough saves tonight. Been a good night for Minnesota as they will go all time 4 1 and 1 against Columbus. And as I mentioned, trying to hold Columbus to those 14 shots, that would be a franchise record for least shots on goal allowed in a single game. Delane Rollison is on his way to consecutive shutouts. That a first in franchise history. Congratulations, Delane Rollison. He shut out the Blues. Now he's shut out.
it was fun to play and uh, third uh, straight win, so uh, it was good. So we cannot let up and we have to keep playing. You guys should stick around, huh? Bringing pretty good luck for us. Yeah. Didn't really have to do much tonight. The guys played a great game, so it was, it was a lot of fun to watch. That's for sure. Marion played well. He got the got the holes, and Bruno was able to feed him a lot tonight. So it was it was nice for us. It was nice for me to, to get a couple goal lead and be able to take a little bit of a break. You know, we just wanted to come out and play the right way. Uh, you know, I think all 20 guys won again tonight. When when our team goes and all 20 guys go, you know, we can be a pretty good team. And when it doesn't, we can be a pretty bad team. So I think we're really trying to focus on having everybody going and everybody bring their best game here the last 16 games this season. Pass the puck. Pass the puck. You guys get enough stuff? You guys are good luck for us. I think we're going to have to bring you guys on the road more often, uh, win a couple games and all that. You guys are a good luck chair. Come on, bud. Pass the puck. You want to be Manny? Oh, I'm going to have to set him straight. I'll tell you that. You don't want to be a goalie, Jackson. It's too expensive. Only the weird guys are goalies. Hey. Who are you now? I'm Manny. You're Manny? Uh -huh. All right. I'm going down. I'm full of feet. I'm full of feet. That's me. No. Sure. I know he wants to do that. All right. Jimmy, Jimmy. Oh, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> Can you say bye to the camera? Can you say bye? Bye. See ya. See you later, guys. This has been a presentation of NHL Productions.